Topic number five, review factoring trend polynomials. There are actually six topics, six types of factoring polynomials. We really only going to encounter about four of them. So some of the things that you saw in topic number four, we actually now going to do its opposite operation, which is actually factoring. Or in a way, you can say we are talking about division of polynomials. Okay. So factoring is basically a division of, of polynomials. First thing first, first type out of the six, factoring what we so call the greatest common factor. So earlier, earlier uh, in topic number four, I mentioned something about find the LCD between three and four. So let me show you a different way. Finding the LCD is about counting the repeated and the non-repeated factors. Oops. Three and four, for example. If I want to find the LCD, what I do is write three as three times one or just three. Prime factors makes four, two times two. LCD is about finding the repeated factor and the non-repeated factors between the two denominators. The three did not repeat with, with, with the other sets of factors, so you count that one time. This two did not repeat with another set of factor three, with the three, so you count that one time. The two did not repeat with another set of factor, you count that one time. So Lee's common denominator is about counting the repeated factor and the non-repeated factors. So that's why when you multiply this together, you get 12. Greatest common factor. I gotta use a different example. If I do greatest common factor between maybe like a 25 and a 30. 25, I know prime factor makes up 25 will be five times five. 30, I know is five times six, but the six is two times three, right? Six times five, give me 30. So when you write them out as prime factors, what you do for greatest common factor is to only count the repeated factors. So between the two terms. So these two repeated between the two factors. Count that one time. This five did not repeat with another another set of with another set of factor. So you don't count that. Two did not repeat, three did not repeat. So the greatest common factor between 25 and 30 is actually just gonna be five. So finding the greatest common factor versus finding the least common denominator is quite different. It's about how you count the repeating factors and the non-repeating factors. So to find the greatest common factor, we use prime factorization like I did to break down the terms. And then we count all the repeated factors for the variables. So if I'm attaching variables with my terms, then you always choose the smallest exponent because the smallest exponent repeats Okay, they're the factors of the exponents of the variables repeats. That's why you choose the smallest one. So if I have, if I attaching x squared and x to the third, 25 x squared will be five times five times x times x. 30 x to the third will be two times three times five times x times x times x. So if you only count the repeated factors, you will only count, count the repeated factor two times. So this X did not repeat, so you cannot count that. So that's why for variables, we choose the smallest exponent, 5X squared. So these examples here are polynomials. We, we're going to find their greatest common factor first, factor it out, and we write what's left of it between each terms inside the parentheses. So normally do the coefficient first. Greatest common factor between 2, 22, and 10. The only repeating factor between 2, 22, and 10 got to be 2. <coughs> now the variables. All right, x squared, x squared, x to the third. x repeated between all three terms. You count the smallest one. 
which is x squared. Y to the third, no Y, no Y. So Y did not repeat, so, you, so we don't have any Y as the greatest common factor. So my greatest common factor is 2x squared. So we factor out the greatest common factor, then we say times, open parenthesis. So now is when we perform the division. What we are really saying here is 2x squared will go into the first term how many times? 2x squared will go into 2x squared y to the third how many times? So basically what we are performing is quotient rules on the exponents, okay? So the way I would normally say it, I don't write it this way. The way the normally the way I say it is two going to two one times. You took both x to the outside, so no x left for the first term. You did not take any y to the outside, so your first term should left you should left you with y to the third. Two going to positive twenty-two, positive eleven times. You took both x's to the outside, so no x left for the second term. 2 going to positive 10, positive 5 times. You take, you factor out <coughs> two x's out of the three. So there should be one x remaining in the parentheses for your third term. So that's it. That's how you factor out the greatest common factor. And the best way to, re, to actually check if you factor completely, okay? The best way to check if you factor completely is to check what's inside the parentheses. Okay, you always check inside the parentheses, see if inside the parentheses can be factored again. So since I already factor out all the greatest common factor on already, then when I check inside the parentheses, there should be nothing else can be factored out. A lot of people say the best way to check if we factor completely is to multiply them out. And that is not true. That will actually not, that is not, that does not always work. Okay. Because what happened if I did not factor out the x squared, only factor out the two, then when I re multiply, I will still come up with the same thing. But your answer is actually not factor completely. So the way to check if you factor completely or not is to check what's inside the parentheses. Let's try another one. Okay, greatest common factor between 6, 45, and 21. 6, 45, and 21. <clears throat> we know 6 is 2 times 3. We know 21 is 3 times 7. So I don't say 3 twice. And 3 can actually be u is actually inside the 45 because 45 is 4 times 9, excuse me, 5 times 9, and 9 is actually 3 times 3. So the only common factor repeat between 6, 45, and 21 got to be 3. Check for the variable. x to the third, x to the fourth, x to the third. So choose the smallest one, which is x to the third. y to the third, y squared, y. Smallest exponent between the y is y to the first. So that's my greatest common factor. Then we say times, open parenthesis. And let's see what's left over between, you know, from each, each one of the three terms. So let me show you what I mean by that. 6x to the third, y to the third means 2 times 3 times x, 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 y, y, y. <coughs> if I'm already factoring out 3x to the third and the 1y, then what should be left will be 2y squared. Whatever I did not circle should be what's left over. So three going to six two times. I took all the all three x's to the outside, right? No x left for my first term. I took I factor out one y from three of them, so y squared should be left. Second term three going to positive forty five is positive fifteen. Took three x from four of them, one x left for the second term to one y from two of them, one y is left for the second term. Three going to negative 21, negative seven times. Took three x's, factor out three x's to the outside, no x left for the third term. To the only y to the outside, no, no y left for my third term. So my third term would just be negative seven, okay? So that's how we factor out the greatest common factor. Another type, 
a factoring problem. So this is very important. Factoring the greatest common factor is, is the number one thing we do. Every factoring problem, we always got to check for greatest common factor. <coughs> the second type <coughs> is called the factoring by grouping. Factoring by grouping is a very unique type of type of technique. It's a very particular type of factoring problem. It requires factoring twice. Okay, I will show you. It has two characteristics. You know this is a factoring by grouping problem if you solve four unlike terms. Got to be four unlike terms. And there can be no greatest common factor between those four terms. Then you got yourself a factoring by grouping problem. All right, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit. So what you see, this first example here, there is no greatest common factor between all four terms. And there's no like, and none of these four terms are like terms. So then that's a factoring by grouping problem. So the first thing you do is group the first two and the last two terms by underlining them. Got to underline them. So I'm going to group the first two and the last two. Then we're going to factor out the greatest common factor between the first two terms. And we're going to factor out the greatest common factor between the last two terms. So first two terms. What is my greatest common factor between the first two terms? Between 6 and 15, that should be 3. Between x squared and x to the third, that should be x squared. So my greatest common factor between the first two would be 3x squared. So 3x squared going to 6x to the third, 3 going to 6 two times, right? To factor out 2x from 3, 1x one left. 3 going to positive 15, positive 5 times. To both factor out both x squared to the outside, so no x left for the second term. All right. Factor out the greatest common factor between the first and the last two terms. So then, after you've done that, there should be only two terms left. And what's inside the parentheses should match. So that dictates how we go about factoring the last two terms. The last two terms, there's really no greatest common factor between the two terms other than one. Okay, because I have to factor, I gotta, I gotta write, I gotta put down one. <clears throat> so if I factor out a positive one, then I still end up with negative two x minus five, which the two parentheses does not match. Step number three here tells me that the two parentheses got to match. So I cannot factor out a positive one, but since both of these terms, both of these last two terms are negative, I can factor out a negative one. Because if I factor out negative one, <coughs> negative one going to negative two x is positive two x. Negative one going to negative five is positive five. So if I factor out a negative one, then my two parentheses will match. So by having a subtraction sign right here outside the parentheses tells me here I got two terms. And what and since a parentheses matched. That means what's in the parentheses are the same. So what's the same between all your terms are called the ex, uh, greatest, uh, greatest common factor. What's the same between all the terms is called the greatest common factor. So since I'm, so once my parentheses match, I can actually factor, factor out my greatest common factor, which is the 2x plus 5 again. Because 2x plus 5 is two terms, so that's why I keep them in the parentheses. So if I factor 2x plus 5 between the, you know, from the first term, that means 3x squared should be left for my first term, right? We write down the greatest common factor, then we say times, open parentheses, just like I did with the first two examples. If I factor out my greatest common factor, 2x plus 5 to the outside, then the only thing left is my negative 1. So that go in the so that go in the back. So that's my answer. <clears throat> okay. Factoring by grouping. Same thing with this example. Group the first two and group the last two. 
So as you as you finish in the factoring out the greatest common factor between the first two terms, it will give an idea what the next you know what the what the parentheses should look like in the second parentheses. Between twenty and fifty five, I know I can factor out a five. M to the third and m squared, I can factor out m squared. So between the first two terms, five going to twenty is four times m squared going to m to the third or Take away two out of three m's, one m left. Five going to negative 55, negative 11 times. Factor out both m squared, no m left for the negative 11. So what's inside the parentheses got to match? Okay, what's inside the parentheses got to match? So, oh, I, I mistyped this again. This would be a plus sign right here. So, between the last two terms, being ordered for the parentheses to match, I have to factor out a negative one. Because if I factor out negative one, negative one going to negative four will give me a positive four m. Negative one going to positive eleven will give me negative eleven. Because the parentheses got to match. If the parentheses does not match, then you will have to regroup them. You might have to group the first and the third with second and the fourth together, okay? But this problem is to be a positive 11 in the end, not negative. All right, so once the parentheses matched, what's inside the parentheses becomes my greatest common factor. So we factor that out. So what's left for the two terms got to be 5n squared minus 1. All right. Factoring by grouping. We'll do this quite a bit throughout the semester. All right, let's take a look at factoring trinomial. Factoring trinomial, these are factoring true trinomials. There are generally five different steps, okay? And, this, and, the, and the technique that we are using here is called trial and error methods. So I'm gonna go through this real quick and then I'm gonna repeat myself while I'm doing this example. So what you do, first thing first, always try to factor out the greatest common factor if there is one, all right? If there is one, we're gonna factor out the greatest common factor and write what's, in, and write what's left inside the parentheses, just like we did earlier. Then you're gonna write two open parentheses. If you don't have a greatest common factor, we're just gonna write two parentheses. So let's check. This one right here, there's no greatest common factor between the three terms. So we go ahead and write two parentheses. Step number two, find all the factors of the first term and the last term. So basically what we are doing right now is doing FOIA method backwards. Find all the factors of the first term and the last term. First factor, five. Five is only one times five. Six. six six is one times six and two times three all right because the next one is three times two which you, you already wrote two and three so you don't have to write it again step number three write the factor you just found inside the two parentheses accordingly the factor of the first term go go in the beginning of the two parentheses the factor of the second term go in the back in the back side of the two parentheses so what you do is you're starting from the bottom because the bottom set are the two closest number, two closest digit multiply equal to your product. You always start with those first. So five is one times five. Five is the first term. So one and five, the factor of the first term go at the beginning of the two parentheses. The factor of the last term go at the back side of the two parentheses. So I'm, I'm starting with two and three. Two closest digit multiply together equal to six. Then, step number four says, make sure the inner and the outer combined will give you the middle term. All right, so my inner and outer combined will give me my middle term. So what is my outer? My outer is one times three. I'd like to do outer first. Right, outer. One times three is three. 
inner, two times five is 10. My inner and outer combine, combine means add or subtract. When my inner and outer combine, can it give me a seven in the middle? My middle term is seven. Can it give me seven? Yes, it can. How? The last sign tells you how. When the last sign is negative, so step number five, if the last term of a trinomial is negative, it means the inner and the outer must subtract to get to the middle term. That's what I just did. The choice for the sign is a positive and a negative. The choice for the sign will be one positive, one negative. So it depends on the middle term. If the middle term is positive, then the plus sign got to, got to go to the bigger of the two inner and outer because I need more positive than negative combined to end up with a positive seven in the middle. So that being said, I'll turn it to be a negative three. So I'll turn, remember, is one times three. If it need to be negative three, that will be one times negative three. So the other parenthesis got to be plus. Put my variable in there and I am done. X plus two times five X minus three. Okay, so these are the steps that are going over your mind. Okay, when you're actually factoring a tr trinomial. So you take a look at this problem, for example. There's no greatest common factor again because at 47. So I will go ahead and write two parentheses. All right. Step number two, find all the factor of your first term and find all the factor of your last term. So factor the first term 20, one times 20, two times 10, or I can say four times five. 24 can be one times 24, two times 12, three times eight, and four times six. So starting from the bottom, okay? Put all the fact, put the factor of the first term at the beginning of the two parentheses. The factor of the second term put on the back side of two parentheses. So if I put it put it like this, okay, you see four and four together actually causes you have a greatest common factor of four. Because I did not have a greatest common factor earlier, I cannot put four with the four. So if so, I knew this gonna is not gonna work. So I will swap them. If I put six right here, four right there, greatest common factor between four and six will give me another greatest common factor two. So that tells me that I may not be able to use four and six. I might need to use three and eight. Okay. So if you do this long enough, you will realize exactly what number to put and where. So now my outer, if I do it this way, my outer is 32. My inner is 15. Can 32 and 15 combine give me 47 in the middle? Yes, it can if I what? If I add them. So step number five, when you do the signs, if the last end of the trinomial is positive, it means the inner and outer must add to get the middle term. The choice for the signs is either plus plus or minus minus, positive positive or negative negative. Well, that depends on your middle term. If a middle term is negative, then both of these in and out are got to be negative. And put my x in there, and I am done. 4x minus 3 times 5x minus 8. Okay, trial and error method. We tried 4 and 6 on the back side. It didn't work, so I moved on to the next set, 3 and 8. Well, Mr. Chan, why don't you, why don't you use 2 and 10 instead? Well, if I use 2 and 10 at the front, and using four and six on the back, that will continuously give me greatest common factor that I don't I don't have. So that's why I went with three and eight. Okay. All right. So that's trinomial. That's factoring difference of squares. Okay. So the way how you recognize difference of square problem is number one, you only have two terms. Both terms are perfectly squared, and there's a subtraction sign in the middle. So those type of factoring problem tells you that this is a difference of squares. All right, so difference of square. So that means these answers are already squared. So what was my A before it was squared? 
what was x squared before it was squared? It must be what? X. It must be X. What was 16 before it was squared? It must be four. There you go. So my answer, X plus four, X minus four. All right, that's how we factor out. That's how we factor different squares. Now, if you look at this example here, uh, that is not different to square, but there is a greatest common factor between the two terms. So if I find out the greatest common factor, which I believe is a five, that should leave me with four X squared minus nine Y squared. So check inside the parentheses to see if I'm factoring completely. If I check inside the parentheses, what, what do I see? I see a difference of what? Squares. So I can factor again. What was my A before it was squared? What was 4x squared before it was squared? It must be 2x. Was my B before it was squared? Or was my 9y squared before it was squared? It must be 3y. All right, 1 plus and 1 minus. There you go. Now that's factoring completely. All right, I got this example here. This is a uh, factoring by grouping. So with, um, I think it has difference of square embedded into it. So I'm gonna group the first two and the last two. All right, from the first two terms, I know I can factor out X to the third power. Smallest exponent between the first two is X to the third. So take three X from four of them, one X left. All right, x to the third going to x to the third. x to the third going to x to the third got to be one time. So when I factor out all the stuff to the outside, that should left me with just a one there. All right, between the last two terms, I can factor out a negative 4x because I want the parentheses to match because parentheses has a minus sign here in the middle. So between the last two, if I factor out 4x, Negative four going to negative four is positive. Take one X from two of them, one X is left. Negative four going to positive four is negative one times, right? If, you, if you're going evenly, it's one time. It's, remember, these are divisions. To the only X outside, no X left. So now my parentheses matched. So if I factor again, oh, check this out. This look like a fashion by grouping problem, isn't it? But there is a greatest common factor here. Let me finish this. So if I factor this one out, this is going to be x minus 1, right? Greatest common factor times first term should be x to the third minus 4x. So this is not factoring completely because in the second parenthesis, if you checked, this is x to the third, there's another x there. <clears throat> so that means I can actually factor out another x. So this whole problem, this whole problem started with has the greatest common factor between the four terms. So I'm gonna scratch it on purpose. So if I will factor out the greatest common factor x, then was in the parentheses now should be x to the third minus x squared minus 4x plus 4. So what's inside the parentheses is actually <clears throat> factoring by grouping. Check this out. So this x remains outside, right? Factoring by grouping. So these two, I can factor out an x squared. So from these two, I should end up with x minus 1. The last two terms, I can factor out a negative 4 as the greatest common factor because that will be negative 4 going to negative positive x times. Negative 4 going to positive 4 is negative 1 times. So now the two parentheses matched. So this x is still outside, right? My greatest common factor x is remaining outside. So now these two are greatest common factor. So I need to factor that out. So what's left will be x squared minus 4, which are, so I'm not writing this big parenthesis anymore because 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 right now everybody is one term now. 
So I don't need a big, another extra big parenthesis. So this is a difference of square if you check it again. So that can be factored again. So x is x, x minus one, and that will give me x plus two and x minus two, right? This part is a difference of square, can be factored again. So a problem like these, it has difference of square embedded into it. On top of that, first thing to do was to factor out the greatest common factor. So from this line earlier, if I would note it, if I can catch myself by saying, okay, another X can be factored out along with the X minus one. So what's in the parentheses should be X squared minus four, which would be this, then I can factor again. So always check what's inside the parentheses to know if we factor it completely. All right, what type of factoring problem is this one? So make your choice. All right, question number two is going to be on the handwritten portion. Okay, the entire question two is on the handwritten portion. So I got it up here. So <clears throat> I want you to do factoring trinomial. So I want, so question number two, number one, factor all, find all the factor of three. Okay, so write three is equal to one times three, right? That's only one set of factors. Number two, find all the factor of the last term. So this problem has no greatest common factor. So we jump straight to step number two, 28. So you can write one times 28, two times something, okay, so on and so forth. Starting with the last set of factor. So it's whatever the last set of factor you got from the 28 and the three right here. Write the factor you just found inside the two parentheses accordingly. So since there's no greatest common factor, two parentheses, right? One and three got to be in the front because th the factor of three is only one and three. And whatever the last side is right here that you're going to find, you put on the back side of two parentheses. And then number four, I want you to demonstrate, okay, the inner and outer. So let's do outer first, outer, inner. So I want you to demonstrate this times this is going to be outer, this times this is going to be inner. So I want you to demonstrate that you will somehow end up with positive 17 in the middle, okay, with the inner and outer combined. So you don't have to fill in the signs in here, okay? You can just follow, because filling the signs, when we factor in the trinomial here, write the signs in there and write the variable in there is the very last step, okay? And this very last step come from, make sure the inner and outer combined will give you a middle term, okay? So. So when I say demonstrate the inner and outer combined, it's referring to this part right here that I did. All right. Um, question number three is also on the handwritten portion, all three of them on the handwritten portion. So you can do number one, number two right here from the problem, underline the first two terms, underline the last two terms. Do not use parentheses. Do not use parentheses. That's incorrect, because when you use parentheses, you make you make them look like something times something already. So group them by underline them and factor out the greatest common factor between the first two terms and factor out the greatest common factor between the last two terms. So that will be the answer for three. So once the parentheses matched, factor out the greatest common factor again and finish your problems, okay? So that all, that's all you gotta do for question number four. All right, so just a quick review on how to do greatest common factor, factoring by grouping, um, difference of squares, okay? There's actually three other one I didn't mention. Um, <clears throat> the the sum and, sum and difference of cube and perfect square binomial. I didn't mention that. And that's okay. If we encounter it, well, uh, I, will, I, I, will, I will show you. But make sure you know how to do these three types of factoring. All right, thank you for watching.